The former Satanist, Gabriel Estevao, met Jesus Christ in person. This is a powerful testimony of his conversion from darkness to light. Born into a family steeped in the occult going back generations, Gabriel Estevao was raised and initiated into the highest levels of the Satanic Order. He tells his story of how Jesus appeared to him and saved him from the treacherous kingdom of darkness. The story you are about to hear is true. The individuals mentioned are real. There we have a brother here to talk about more of his testimony, and I just want to let you guys know, I've been blessed again and again by his testimony, and I hope you have been also. Today we want to kind of shift gears and talk more about some of the good things you learned on the other side, Gabriel. First and foremost, how are you? Thank you for asking. I'm very fine. Thank you, and how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here. So one thing that I've heard you talk about before in the past was how the evil angels talk to you about diet and about how to treat the body in such a way that optimal health is accomplished. Talk to me a little bit more about that. If I want to know your mind, I need to know what you are eating. What are you watching? What do you like to see? What do you like to do? From the five senses, I can know who you are. But concerning that side, there is this restriction for people that want to become a god or an idol or an asta. For anything in the world, you need to follow all rules from that side. One of them is food. You need to eat on time. You really need to eat on time. Not on any time that you want to eat, but eat on time according to your body. For food, five hours apart. For juice, two hours apart. Every two hours, you need to drink juice, natural juice. Natural juice from fruits, fruits from the farm. From that side are very strong restrictions concerning the diet. You need to be healthy. You need to eat because the food will be your medicine. You don't need to go to the hospital because the food will be your medicine. Concerning that side, food is medicine. They taught me about that a long time ago from the time on since I was born. I grew up with it. Before I left that side, I didn't go to the hospital. I didn't know what is a hospital. Yes, because the food was my medicine. That's interesting. So you're saying that in that system, those that want to be a god and meaning they want to be a part of the system, a part of the illuminated, high up in the system, they have diet restrictions by the evil angels. Yes. Your meals had to be five hours apart and you had to drink every two hours natural juices. Even food must be natural. So, no not anything that is processed? Oh no no no, this must be all natural. What about meat? Did they eat meat? I'm talking about natural food, vegetables, things from the farm. So, vegetables, fruits, herbs. Cassava. Maybe we have rice over here, right? Cassava and potato, such things and beans. All these things we needed to eat on time. So why couldn't you eat processed foods, like food in a package? Oh no no, that side said that this food is for slaves. Slaves need to eat that because they don't have control over their mind. We need to control their mind. Wow. Yes, indeed. You needed to eat well, healthy food because you needed to have a good mind. You needed to think well because you wanted to become a god, an idol, or a star. That's why you needed to eat those things and also have those very, very strong restrictions. So it's very, very restricted. Yes, because you needed to have a mind, a clear mind, and then you needed to connect with the spirits because you will become a spiritual medium. So, eating these kinds of foods helped you to maintain your connection with the spirit? Yes, it did. It was necessary to have a good mind in order to hear nicely because your mind is clear. But if your mind is not clear, you wouldn't be able to hear them as well? No, no. Really? The evil angels? Yes, that's right. Wow. So they reserve processed foods for slaves, those that are not part of the system, because they need to be controlled. So processed foods are not good for you, basically. I find that interesting, very interesting. So, Gabriel, now you're a Christian, you're no longer a part of that side. Praise God. I have one text from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible is the only book that Christians use, but for the Jews they call it the Torah. But I'm using only the Bible for Christians, for the Christian religion. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore if a man be in Christ he is a new creation. 
All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Who is in Christ, in Jesus Christ, is a new creation because he met with Jesus and Jesus forgave him his sins. From that moment this man or this woman can become a new creation, meaning God can create a new story for you. From that moment that I met with Jesus that is my new story. I met with Jesus one day, but before I met with Jesus I wanted to know who is that side. Why are we fighting? I had a lot of questions in my mind at that time because I saw the fight, the great conflict between that side and this side. It's like a judgment. It was a fight, not like a fight between people. It was with power, like a physical fight. Oh, so it's like a kind of political fight with laws, with arguments. Yes, a kind of political fight with laws, with arguments. You use arguments to convince me. So you're saying, you saw the spiritual war behind the scenes? So you saw good angels, and you saw bad angels back then, because the evil angels opened your eyes to be able to see those things. Yes, my eyes were opened. The angel on that side opened my eyes to see spiritual things that a normal person can't see. And I saw the fight between the angel that was with me and another angel that side. Only one of them on that side, one of them can convince ten of us. God convinced them to do what? For instance, if someone wanted to do something wrong, if our angel on that side wants to convince this person to do a wrong thing, that angel can appear and all of these angels can disappear. Oh, so you would see angels on that side, trying to influence somebody to do something wrong, but then one angel from the other side of God would appear and it would cause this one to leave. Yes, that one angel can make all the other angels disappear. They'll just ran away basically. Yes, and they saw the same angel, the same power, the same appearance, the same structure, but what happened was the question in my mind. And then one day an agent in my country wanted to destroy missionaries in a province. We call it Kabinda. They went there in order to destroy the missionaries that were there. To kill the missionaries? Yes, the missionaries that were there. To either kill the missionaries or to put something that would make them afraid. When this agent went there and came back straight away, we asked him, Why did you come back so quickly? He said, Oh, we can't touch them. We need someone more powerful than us. Okay, let me just make sure I understand. So the agent went there to destroy that missionary or to make him afraid, but then the agent came back quickly and you were asking him, Why did you come back so quickly? Yes, and the answer was, no, we can't do these things because there is someone more powerful than us. We can't do anything there. Wow. And then the angel told me to go there. You go and see what happened. And the evil angel put me there. That is a spiritual journey. So they transported you there? Yes, they transported me from the side that I was to that other side. To the place where the missionary was? Yes, to the Kabinda province. Before I got there, I saw a guy, and from him came light, his own light was coming off of him. He said, Don't touch my property. All these are my property. Don't touch them. Meaning don't touch them. They are special. Special for him like precious jewels. They are my precious jewels. Don't touch them. I've never seen someone like that. I know the structure of the angels. I know that angels have their own light, but a man doesn't have his own light. I knew that from the beginning since I was a kid. I don't know that one, it is not a normal human. Who is that? And I asked my angels. I asked them, Please can you tell me who's that? Some of them answered me. That is our enemy. It's enemy number one for us. But it was not the answer that satisfied me. The answers from the angels, from my fellow angels didn't satisfy me. But in my mind was that question, Who is that? Who is our first enemy? I knew that we call that one, the guy in heaven, the guy that is in heaven, the guy in the air that Christians call Jesus, but who is Jesus? So on that side, they used to say that their greatest enemy is somebody in heaven? Yes, somebody in heaven. Wow. Somebody in heaven the Christians call Jesus Christ. But on that side, we cannot call him Jesus. So as human agents, you're not able to say his name. That's right. You cannot call him Jesus. You need to call him that guy in heaven or that one in heaven. You don't want to say the name, but say that one, sometimes that boy in heaven. They call him a boy, that boy in heaven. They call him boy? Yes, they are calling Jesus that guy in heaven, our first enemy. But does that guy really exist? Is he real? This was my question. 
So you didn't think he was real? Yes, that image was in my mind and then I thought, who is that? Who is he? This is powerful. This is just powerful man. But you know what are some other ways that they referred to this enemy? How else did they call him? If you want to talk about him, you can call him what you want, but not Jesus. Some pastors call him Jesus only because they want to deceive the people in order to make a lot of people believe in the wrong way. You can call Jesus, but ironically, not with his proper name, but ironic names. Not like the Christian called Jesus with his correct name. They can call him Jesus, but in the wrong way. Hmm. One day there appeared a guy, he was a Christian. His name is Elad Ventura, and he came to the shop of my older brother. He came, and then he told me about someone called Jesus. He said, Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? I asked myself. He told me something about Jesus. This is somebody that died on the cross and he died because of our sins. He said that he is also our creator and he told me about the story of the Bible, that the human beings made a mistake. This mistake was sin and then the human beings were condemned to die the eternal death. But someone called Jesus Christ came into this world. He's God and this God became what? He became a human being and then he was born here and he lived like a man and then he died because of our sins and resurrected. Now he is in heaven. He is the advocate for all people that made mistakes or committed sins, for everyone. And then he said that this guy has power. It was on the first day that he talked to me about the story. And then on the second day he came again because that shop was near the town. So let me ask you a question. While this guy is telling you about Jesus, you were always surrounded by the angels and they were okay with you talking to this guy. No, 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 they were very angry. They said, don't listen to this guy. You know that we don't like to talk with people like that one. Don't listen. No, don't listen anymore to that guy, please. You can tell him. I don't want to listen to you anymore. You can go. Thank you for your explanations, but you can go. And I said, okay. But in my mind, I wanted to listen to that guy. This guy came again. On another day, he came again and he continued to tell the story. He came three times in three days, this was the second day. On the second day, he continued to tell me the story about Jesus. And then he told me about Jesus and his disciples. What is a disciple? I wondered. Well, they are people following him and he taught the disciples, that small group of men. He was teaching them and after teaching them, those disciples became what? Later they became teachers themselves. And then I said, Oh, this story, is this story for me? Why are you talking about the disciples of Jesus? Who is this Jesus? This was the third day and my angels became very, very angry. They said, don't listen anymore to that one. But the guy came and I received him like an enemy. I received him and said, okay, you can continue to talk. Why did you receive him an enemy? Why not just send him away? There was something in my mind, something that said, listen. One thought is in my mind, not from the angels, but that thought said, Listen, you need to listen more. You need to listen. I don't know where that voice was from, but I knew something in my mind said, Listen, you need to listen. And then on this third day, it was the last time this guy came and continued the story. He talked about the Jesus of power and that he has more power than anyone in this universe. I asked him, Are you sure? Are you sure? He said, Yes. Jesus can give you freedom. If Jesus gives you freedom, you will receive peace and you will receive your freedom. And then Jesus will protect you from everyone. He told me about Satan. Even Satan and his angels don't have power against Jesus. Because Jesus said, I have all power in heaven and on earth. Everywhere. He is powerful. He said, Jesus is powerful. But who is this Jesus? Well, Jesus is someone people believe in. But who is Jesus? Jesus is someone who is alive. He was saying, yes, he's alive. Okay, tell me more about this Jesus, I said. So he talked about Jesus. He told me who Jesus is, who Lucifer is, who the angels are. I said, that story I know, this part I know, but you are talking about this Jesus. You say that he is more powerful than Lucifer. Lucifer is a powerful angel. I'm talking about how it is. Lucifer is our prince, why are you talking about our prince, the father of light, the prince of light? Lucifer means the light, the morning star. He was talking about Lucifer as like someone gave him the wrong information. 
He was talking about people on that side. Those people don't have peace, they are like slaves. They can do anything that they want to do, but in Jesus Christ you can find peace and freedom. You can do everything that you want to do, but in accordance to the rules because everywhere is a limit. You are an American. You know, in America you can find that people call America the land of freedom. But the land of freedom has a law. I have freedom, but I need to respect the freedom from my what? My neighbor, right? These are the rules. I need to respect the rules, the limit. My limit can be the freedom for my neighbor. On that side, he told me we have freedom but with a limit, okay? God can create a limit. You can be free to do everything that you want but be within the limit. I said, okay, good. Thank you for your explanation, but I don't want to listen to you anymore. Okay, you can go, thank you. But never, never come here again, please. Okay, thank you for your explanation. The guy left, but from that moment on, my mind went again back to that person that I saw. He is like a human being, a normal human being, but he was so different because he had his own light. His own light, light like the angels. So you are saying his own light was just coming off of him? Yes, that's right. Natural light. I was thinking again about that one, and it started to make sense. In my mind, I made the connection. That guy, this missionary, the evangelist, that Christian that talked about Jesus. He said, Jesus became a human being. He is God, but this God became a human being and he died. He was dead for three days. On the third day, he was resurrected and now he is alive. He is in heaven. On that side, I learned that someone we call the guy is in heaven. Hmm, hmm. The guy is in heaven, but I have never seen him. I wanted to see him. I wanted to connect with this guy in heaven. I wanted to connect with him. And I saw that one. Jesus is like a human being. And I saw that the human being has his own light. I said, okay. The angel had told me that this is our first enemy. But if this guy died to save people, and our function, our objective is to kill people, but that one died to save people, that means that one is right and we are wrong because we are killing. Right. We are killing people, but that one died to save people. Wow. I was never thinking like that. I tried to make the connection. So you say, you were connecting the dots. You heard this guy talk about Jesus who was God. He became a human and died, but rose again and went to heaven. Yes, indeed. And then you're connecting the dots with this person. You saw the person who was a human, but had his own light. Yes, that's right. And then with that you're also connecting when the angels, the evil angels told you that their greatest enemy is this person and he's from heaven. Yes, yes, that's right. And then you're connecting also the fact that you were killing people, but this person Jesus died to save people, and it made you realize that you were wrong. Yes, and I was thinking about the past time when we went to kill a lot of people, and a lot of angels from that side came to save them. They said, Don't touch them. They are our property. They are our property. Don't touch them. And we never touched them, not even the evil angels. They never touched them when that one said, No. Hmm, aha. Uh -huh. They have more power. When they said, No. That means that even that side must respect it. This is the fight between angel and angel. I was connecting the facts. We kill a lot of people and we don't have feelings. I didn't have feelings on that side, no emotion. So even as you were killing people, you had no feelings? Yes, they were objects, only like objects for me, not human beings. So human beings were like objects for you? Yes, maybe this one is important, but this one is not important. I can destroy it. I could not feel anything. So there were some Christians that you tried to kill, and when you got there with your evil angels, you would see the other angels, and they would say, No. This one you can't touch. Yes, that's correct. So would you be able to kill some other Christians? I want to say this. The people that have the most protection is not your president of the United States of America. Oh no. Not the president of Russia or China. No, not at all. The people that are most protected, that have the most security, are the people of that side the people that believe in God, who are friends of that God, of that Jesus. Because only one angel is enough to protect that one. There can be a lot of bad angels, but they can't touch that one. This angel will protect this person. Nobody can touch this person, only if God permits it. 
only with the permission from God when he says, you can touch. So you've seen that before? Yes, I saw these things. It's normal on that side. So people that are on that side know about it. It's normal for them. It's nothing new they know about these things. You mean the people who are on the highest levels and the secret societies? Yes, they know about these things. This is not new for them. They know. They know what I'm talking about. Wow. But, okay, why did I become a Christian? This is my story. Okay, we were there and after that day that guy, this Christian that talked to me, he left. Until now he lives. He continues to be a Christian. This guy, Elad Ventura. Right. Well, this guy left and I was thinking about what he told me. I wanted to connect the things he told me with what I saw in the past. The angels know how to find out. But the evil angels and not even Satan knows what's in my mind. If I don't open my mouth to give him the information, he can't read my mind. So the evil angels can't read your mind? Yes, that's right. They don't have the power to read my mind. Only because they like a psychologist, they think they know what I'm thinking, but not exactly. If you don't want to show what you're thinking, they can't know. They can't tell what's on your mind. Yes, that's right. They realize that I'm thinking something, but they can't tell what. And I was thinking. I went home and I was saying in my mind, I want to know this guy. I want to know this Jesus. If this Jesus exists, I want to see him. I want to see this Jesus. If he is real, I want to see him and I want to talk to him and I want to ask him a lot of questions. I said to him in my mind, come into my mind. I said it in my mind because I can't tell it with my mouth because the angel is around me and so I said it in my mind. Come into my mind, I want to see this guy called Jesus. So you were saying in your mind, come Jesus, I want to get to know you, I want to see who you are. Yes, that's correct. That guy said that Jesus is more powerful than Lucifer and I know Lucifer and I know the evil angels and a lot of angels and this guy is supposed to have more power than the angels? Listen, I don't believe that. I want to see him. Is it true I want to see him and I want to talk to him? I want to ask him a lot of questions. Questions that are in my mind. I want to ask him. I want to see him. I want to see Jesus. Jesus come. I want to see you. If you are real, well then come. I want to see you. One day I was in my bedroom on the bed and I saw something that I've never seen before. It was a light, a small light and this small light became bigger and bigger. The angel that was with me, all angels the first time, who were always around me since I was born until that time, this was the first time that they left me alone. Wow. They left me alone and then that light became a someone. Oh, wow. It became someone. Somebody like a human being was there. And all the members of my body became paralyzed. So your body somewhat became paralyzed? Yes, indeed. I couldn't move. Only my eyes were open, but I couldn't move. I could not close my eyes. Wow. I remember when this thing happened in me. I thought, oh, I know this process. When we sent an agent to kill a person in a hall, at home or anywhere, the agent needs to paralyze the human being to facilitate his work. I was there to see him and then this one appeared there. This one was there, a human being that has his own light. Oh, wow. He had his own light in him. And I thought, oh, I saw this one some day at that place. It was in my mind, I was thinking, and asked him, who are you and why are you here? Who are you and why are you here? It was all with my mind. I didn't open my mouth. I didn't open my mouth. And you asked him in your mind? Yes, in my mind. Then this one answered the question exactly how I wanted. But before he said to me, Receive peace, receive peace. The first word from him that he said was, Receive peace. Hmm, aha. Uh -huh. His word is like a creation. He said these words in my heart, You must know I had a cold heart, no emotions or anything there. That heart that I was born with, something got into that heart and put in me another heart. Oh, wow. He said, receive peace, and I received peace in the same moment. I never felt like that before. He said, receive peace. I didn't know what is peace, what is love. I didn't know that before. Hmm, hmm. I received peace like someone changed my heart, changed my mind, changed me in that moment when he said, receive peace. And then he said something else. I created you. I created you for a better life. I created you for better things. Wow. 
and then he started to answer the question that I asked. Oh man, this is just wow. I asked, who are you? He said, I am. He said, I am. He started by saying, I am. Wait, wait. So you asked him, who are you? And why are you here? And what did he say? He said, I am that I am. Wow. And I came here because you asked me to come. You asked me to come. I came here because you asked me. You said, come and I came here. Oh man, that's powerful. I had a lot of questions and I asked him, what is the meaning of, I am that I am? Hmm, hmm. I am that I am, means, I'm your creator. That's what he said? I'm the creator of all things. Hold on, hold on. So you asked him what does that mean? I am that I am? Yes, that's right. It means, I am the creator. And he said, I'm the creator? Yes, he did. I learned that someone exists that is the creator. And I know the creator is a god. Meaning you are god. And you can read my mind. You don't have any limits. He said, I am your creator. And I was thinking, now if this is the creator. I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. The angels can't read my mind. If I say something in my mind, I don't open my mouth, they can't read what's on my mind. So, they can't know what you think, when you are not saying anything? Right. They can't know. But this guy here was reading my mind. Before I asked, this one was answering my question. Before I asked, he answered the question in my mind. Wow. I learned from the angels that someone who is the creator is omniscient. He knows all things. Yes, he knows all things. So the evil angels taught you that? Yes, and I wanted to connect it. This talk was connecting. He knows me, he knows my story. Aha, uh -huh, I see. And I wanted to connect the things that I heard from that guy, that this one is the creator. The creator is right here with me. The creator exists, he is real. He is here with me. He is talking to me. It is a privilege. The creator has a mind that is omniscient. He knows everything. You don't need to keep anything from him. I learned this from them. When he said, receive peace, I realized this one is not just some other guy, this one is our creator. This one is God. Oh, wow. I started to ask him a lot of questions from that moment on. I knew that I was in the presence of God. I was there and was thinking. I never regretted anything. But when he talked to me in my mind, I was feeling something in my heart. I was feeling that something is wrong within myself. That means I'm changing. Hmm, aha. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm changing. My mind is changing. And I was thinking good things and I asked, If you're the creator, why do you permit a lot of people to die? And why did you not do anything? The answer was, I needed to leave in order that people can do the things that they want to do. Because the problem is not with me, the problem is with the people that like to do wrong. The things that they are doing are not nice. You need to leave these things. Now you are thinking. Now I appeared because you asked me. You did the things you did because you learned from the other side. Now you know that it is wrong. Hmm, hmm. Then he said, But before you didn't know that that thing is wrong because you were a slave of that side. You could not make any decision for yourself. You never made a decision for yourself. Now I appeared because you made a decision for yourself now, and I'm here, and you are free now. But leave these things to me now. Sometimes I leave because the people need to see that they're doing wrong things. I asked a lot of questions about this world, why people die, why he was not there. He said, I was there. I was there and I said, don't do that, but you did it anyway. Wow. You did it. I said, don't do that, but you did it anyway. I can't force you. That side can force, but I can't force anyone to stop to do something. I only can stop you if you are doing something to my precious people. Hmm. If I don't want you to do it, I can say, no, don't do that. Not even Satan can do anything when Jesus says, don't do that. No one can disobey his word. Hmm. Yes, I asked a lot. The talk was very nice and it was long too. I asked a lot of things. So you said, he was there when you were trying to do wrong things. And he said, don't do it. 
but you still went ahead and you did it. Yes, I did, because he meant the problem is not with him, the problem is with us. We do things when he says, stop, but we want to do them. He can't force anyone. Do you understand? He can't force anyone. Who forces the people are Satan and his angels. They like to force. They like to use force, even the agent. They like to force people. One day they will put a law that everyone, even if you don't want, you have to obey either by force or volunteeringly. Force is from that side, but from God's side, you need to obey by love. Hmm. Because he said, I am love. I am the creator. I am the father. I cry all the time when I see people dying, but I can't do anything. He said he cried? He said, I have power, but we have rules. In the conflict, you have power. If you make your decision, I can't come to interfere in your decision. No, I can't. There's something that I want to do. I want to give an advice. Don't do that. Do this thing. If you want to do your will, if you don't want, I can't force. He is powerful. I saw his appearance. In the form that he is talking, I have never seen something like that. I have never seen anyone like that. I know the angels I met with Lucifer, but someone like him I didn't see. I have never seen anyone like him before. Oh, wow. And I wanted to see him only to admire him and the form and the way that he answered the questions exactly how I wanted. How was he answering the question? How was he carrying himself? You said the way he was acting. How is it? It is lovely. He is a loving person. He is love in person. You see perfection and him. Wow. In the way that he is talking it is in a good way. He is talking slow and nicely. Yes, and your eyes like to see and your ears like to listen to that voice. It's the sweetest. Thoughts are coming into your mind like food. If you're very hungry and you see food that you like very much, you are eating with great appetite. And when I hear, my ears like to listen to that voice. And that voice is entering in your heart, your mind and your soul. I think that's changing your life nicely. This is our creator. If you are with the creator, everything will be nice. And he has time for everything. You are there, you are thinking, but you are there. He was reading my mind. After a long talk, he left me to make my decision and to move the members of my body. And I said, what do you want that I shall do? What can I do? What do you think that I can do? He said, you make your decision. You are free. You make your decision. You are free. On the other side, you are not free. On the other side, you cannot make your own decisions. On the other side, you only need to obey. You are a slave. You don't have a will. You cannot do anything alone. You need to do everything that they want you to do. If you don't want to do their will, they will force you and you obey by force. If you don't want to do it by peace, you will do it by force. But this one said, the choice is yours. You need to choose for yourself. You are free. I'm here because you called me. You asked me to come and I'm here. I said, what do you want me to do? I asked again. You see, you asked him again. Yes, I asked him the same question again. He answered in a different way. You have freedom, you can answer this question yourself. And I said, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I made a mistake, but I didn't know. He said, I know. I knew you before you were born. I knew you. What is your name? I said, my name is Gabriel. Do you know what's the meaning of Gabriel? I said, no, I don't know and I hate this name. And he said, do you know why you hate this name? But you didn't like that. You didn't like it? No, I didn't like it and I put another name, a nickname. That was Gabloid. Gabloid means for me the evil angel. People call me Gabloid and the meaning for me was the evil angel. I didn't like Gabriel, but it was my name, but I didn't like it. I hated this name and he asked me, Why do you hate this name? Do you know why? Because the meaning of the name you are called by is my name. Gabriel means the man of God. Oh, wow. The man of God for the angel the meaning is the presence of God. It means you are called by my name and you hate me because of your name. Now you know why. Now you can choose for yourself. What do you want to do? I said, please forgive me. Again, I made a mistake. I know now I have sinned. Please forgive me. And he said, yes, I know. Someone chose for you, but now you can choose for yourself. 
From this day on, you need to ask yourself what you want to do. He asked me now the same question that I asked him before, what do you want to do? I said, I want to worship you, but I am afraid of that side. I know that they will kill me if I leave their side. I knew a lot of people on that side that wanted to leave that place and they killed the people. They liked to kill people and I knew that side they would come to kill me. They would send people to kill me. I don't have any way out. He said, you don't have faith. He said, you don't have faith. Yes, he said, you don't have faith. And I asked him, what is faith? Yes, what is faith? He said, one day when you were in your new home and someone said, close your eyes and you closed your eyes and when you opened your eyes you went to another place. Do you remember? I said, yes, that is faith. When someone asks you to close your eyes, that means faith. It means trust. Faith is trust. You trusted and when you opened the eyes and you were in the other place. Do you remember? I said, yes, I remember this occasion. He was talking about the evil angels? Yes, that's right. He said, that is faith. Faith means trust. And I said, oh, faith means trust? He said it in another way. He said, you need to trust in me like you trusted that side. No difference. You need to trust in me only. Use the same trust, the trust in me. The same thing, the same trust. That you trusted that side, you need to trust in me. This is faith. Faith means trust. Please trust in me. And I said, okay, I trust in you, but save me, protect me from that side. They know. He said, yes, I know they know. You will be my testimony. You will be my instrument to serve other people of that side. You will say, I am here because someone caught me from that side and gave me a new life. Now you can say to other people on that side, I came here because you want to become my agent, but you need to be a volunteer. Don't worry about that side. I'm the creator. I'm your father. I'm your creator. You need to trust your father. I'm the true father. I needed to trust him, but I could not trust someone that I didn't know. I saw him only for the first time and I felt something in my heart. I felt that this is powerful. This is my creator. But deep down in my heart, I did not know him. I had some doubts. He respected my doubts. He told me the story, the true story when he was in heaven, when God created everything and about that angel that they now call Satan. Before he became Satan, he was there as a perfect angel. He told me this story from the beginning. The other side didn't tell me about these things, but he told me in a real way. I knew that story, but in the wrong way, not exactly like that. So they had told you a version of the story? Yes, a version of the story. They said that in heaven is something. In heaven is the throne of God. Our creator, the proper creator, the one that was there and he created all things. And there was someone that he gave a lot of power to. And the one that had a lot of power became the creator of rebellion in heaven. They gave him a lot of power, a lot of things, a lot of privileges. Honor, glory they gave him. But this one wanted to create another kingdom. And God said, You want to create another kingdom? You go create another kingdom. I will give you opportunity to do that. But do it in a good way. But before I want to tell you that I am your creator. Without me you can't live. Because I'm the life. I created life. I'm eternal life. Without me, you are nothing. You will die. He was advising them for a long time, even the other angels. Some of them went back. They went back to that side, but other angels who were there got a lot of advice, but they wanted to create another kingdom and he gave them the opportunity to create another kingdom. He asked them, This kingdom you were a part of, were you agents for that kingdom? Yes or no? They said, Yes. The things that they are doing are nice and good, think for yourself. Now you are thinking in a good way. Then he started to ask me about the things that I did, if they were nice or not nice. Are they good or bad? Hmm. He was using my mind to think about the other side, before I'm going to leave it. In order to make a decision, you need to think. He was teaching me to make a good decision with the reason, not with the emotion. Don't use your emotion, use your reasoning powers. Concerning faith, you need to use not emotion, but reason because faith means what? Trust. If you want to trust, you need to know that one that you are trusting. Hmm. Why are you trusting someone that you don't know? 
This talk was a good talk and he taught my mind to think with my reasoning powers. He reminded me of everything that I did and that it was bad, very, very bad. I was thinking about that action and again I knelt down and I said, Forgive me, I made a mistake. I committed great sin. Now I know that I'm a sinner and I know that you are the creator and you have power. Please forgive me. Please give me your pardon. Now I want to follow you because you are my true father. I didn't know before, but now I'm using my mind. I want to follow you not because someone told me, but because now I know who you are. Now I know who you are. Hmm. The reason why the talk was very, very long was because we talked and talked and talked. I asked a lot of questions and he gave me answers and the other way round and so it was a very long, long talk. And after the talk I knelt down and I worshipped him. I said volunteeringly, I want to follow you and I know why I want to follow you because you are my father, you are my true father, you are the creator. I was on the wrong side, but now I want to stay on the good side. If I have to die, I want to die with you, believe in you, trust in you. I can die now, I don't have fear to die. I am not afraid to die because you are the live. I will live because you are alive. I knelt down and I said, I want to worship you because you are the creator. I want to worship you because I know who you are. My eyes can see you and my ears can hear your voice. You are the creator. My body can know that you are our creator. Hmm. Who are you to say no? Please protect me according to your will. In that moment it was like someone changed my mind. I realized that I needed to do everything the other side wanted. But this side is different, it's voluntarily, it's freedom, it's not by force but by love. I wanted to do it because he loved me first. I want to do it because I love him. Why do I love him? Because he loved me first and he showed me evidence that he loved me. After he told me the story, that he died for all people he showed me the scars below his hands, he showed them to me. That is the evidence, in front of evidence there is no argument. I didn't have an argument. I realize now, he loved me so much, the so-called guy in heaven loved me so much. If he died for me and he shew me the evidence in his body, saying that I'm the one that died on the cross. I'm the one of whom the people say, that guy in heaven, I'm that guy that this fellow on that side told you, I'm here in person. And I appeared because you asked me to come and I came because you asked me. Now I'm here. I am Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. I am Jesus Christ. Now you can see me with your own eyes. That's powerful. You see me yourself now. I'm here. What's your argument? I shew you the evidence. I didn't have any argument, any doubt. In the face of evidence, there is no doubt, no argument. I knelt down and I worshipped him. I was crying the first time like I never cried. I said, I know you loved me so much. I know that you are my creator. I went down with crying and said, Forgive me. Forgive me. Please. And I want follow you voluntarily. No influence, no emotion, I want to follow you. Because you love me and you give me freedom. You give me peace. Peace that I never had before. Peace I was never feeling before. Maybe I'm talking to someone that is on that side. I know you can't leave that side because they will kill you. But this Jesus that I met can save you, like he saved me. I know that they like to kill. I'm alive, not because I want to be alive, but because Jesus is with me even this moment. I can't see him, you also can't see him, but he is with me now. If you will ask him, you can do the same thing as I did. He will appear because he is real. Jesus is real. How long has it been since that encounter happened? From that moment until now? Yes. It is 15 years, a long time. My friend, that's a long time. Yes, but after that he appeared to me at other times because after that meeting I gave my life to him. And he was my friend and I received an angel from him. That was my fellow and was my protector from the evil angels, the evil agents or groups, because they wanted to kill me in many ways, but God was with me. And this angel that Jesus gave me to protect me was with me the whole time and every place because from that side they wanted to kill me. The bad angel from that side came again to kill me and that many days. But Jesus said, Every time that you call me by my name I will appear here. I will be there. Don't worry. I'm your protector. You are my son. I'm your father. Hmm.
and I'm here because God is with me and he protects me from the evil angels. Hmm. Now I am a Christian and I was baptized in 2012. So you were baptized in the year 2012? Yes, into the Adventist Church in the Center Church of Rwanda. The pastor's name was Tunda. Pastor Tunda was the one that baptized me there. And now I'm a Christian. But I'm talking about being a Christian, not only because of this denomination, I'm talking about Jesus or the grace of Jesus. Jesus died to serve everyone, not about the religion or the church. I'm talking about Jesus, the grace of Jesus, the wonderful grace of Jesus. He came to serve everyone. In each age, in each religion, God is there. God is there if you want to talk to him. You can talk to him. If you want to ask him, he can appear to you. Jesus is real. Jesus is what? Jesus is real because I saw him with my own eyes. This is my personal testimony. I saw him and I wanted to tell this story to the people because I know my people in Africa. And in Africa, this is the culture. If I tell the people they say that I'm still on that side and that I didn't leave it, I was afraid to tell the people. So you were afraid to tell the people? Yes, I didn't want to tell the people that I was on that side. But Jesus Christ saved me and came to me. He appeared to me and talked to me. They would say, No, you are crazy. Yes, you are crazy. You can't see Jesus. Why would you see Jesus? People never see Satan. Why you are saying you saw Satan? Who are you? Wow. So I stopped talking with people. I'm a Christian only and I became the evangelist of this church to talk about the grace of Jesus. That Jesus can save anyone. About that side I wanted to talk to a lot of people. But one day I became very, very sick. That was for the first time. I never needed to go to the hospital. But this time I was very sick. Even my older brothers, my family at home knew that I was very sick. In my mind they said, he will die, we know that he will die. The thing in my mind was that I will die. But before I was going to die, I asked my old brother called Carlos or Montero and said, please can you escort me to the church, the central church before I die. I want to go there the last Sabbath. When we went there, he left me there and returned home. The central church is divided into two parts. The part is for the adults and the other part only for the young people. And my fellow called Mauricio was in the other church. It is for many people. And then he called me and said, Please come, I want you to give your testimony for ten minutes. Until now you didn't come and you are an evangelist, you know a lot of stories. You can tell some story. I said, no, I can't stand in front of the people because I'm sick. But he said, you can come, Jesus is with you. You have a lot of stories. You can tell one story. And then in my mind, the Holy Spirit told me, you need to tell your story. Why don't you tell the people? Why don't you want the people to know your story? Tell your story. Don't be afraid. You need to. You don't know these people. There are a lot of people like you who want to listen to the words from you that they might serve them. If someone left this thing and if Jesus Christ saved you, he can save me too. Go and say that you were on that side and the first time I received courage and I went there in front of the church people and I started to say, I want to tell you my story. Before I became a Christian, I was a Satanist. Everybody that was there listened to me. The attention was on me. I said, I was a Satanist before I became a Christian. I told the story who I was when I was on that side where I was born and before I was born. I told about the fellows and what they did on that side. After that I said, but I met with Jesus Christ too. I know Lucifer because he was my friend, but afterwards I met with Jesus Christ too, and Jesus Christ made me a Christian because I started to follow him. And when I started to follow him, he told me to go to this church and I'm here in this church. Hmm. Not because this is the only church, but he said to me, go there. And I'm here and now I'm a Christian. I'm talking to you now because God is with me. God is real. Jesus Christ is real. If sometimes you listen to people, they talk about Jesus, even your pastor, even if you studied theology. But you never met with Jesus in person. I met with him. Jesus Christ is real. Hmm. I came to tell you that Jesus is real. Sure. Jesus is real. Amen. Satan is real and Jesus is also real, I saw him. Amen, he is real. I said, I praise God I am alive. I'm here with you right now. Praise God. 
The people looked at me and I knew in the mind of some of them was doubt. It is normal for a human being to have doubts. That's normal, but a lot of the elders came to ask, Are you sure of the things that you told us? I said, Yes, I'm sure it's true. If you have doubts, you can ask Jesus. You can go home and ask Jesus. You just say, I met someone that told me a story in church. Is that story true, yes or no? You can go and ask him. Jesus is real, he can answer you. That is the church. The Holy Bible says the church is the house of God, and it means that God is there and God knows my mind and he was listening to my voice. Why should I tell you a lie? I have no gain from a lie. What I said is true. You can ask him. Go home and pray in your home and ask him. One elder of them who was a powerful man in my country said, I want to talk to you in private. He came in private and we talked. We talked a lot and he saw that I was sick because he was a doctor. He asked me, Do you know that hospital in Rwanda? I said, No. He told me where this hospital is in the part of Rwanda. He said, Come on Monday to this place. When you get there please ask for my name. I want to talk with you. I went there on Monday and from that time on I started to take medicine. But before that time I went to a lot of hospitals. But they didn't find anything what caused my sickness. So they were doing exams? Yes, but they didn't find anything wrong with me. They didn't find anything. But from that moment on after the day that I gave my testimony, this elder came and when I went to that hospital they did the exams and they found out that I had TB. So you had tuberculosis? Yes, I said. Oh, I'm sick. When I went to the big hospital, they did not find anything. I'm sick. I'm going to die. And he said, No, you won't die. God is with you, my son. He said, God is with you, my son. From this moment, you will be my friend. God be with you. This elder became my friend. That's wonderful. The people in the church know that this elder is the head elder. He is a good elder. He is a man of God. This elder is a big person in my country too. And he is very famous in my country. He is a part of the government. He is a big person, but he is a man of God and he became my father, my spiritual father. Then he went to another church and preached. He was a preacher and he preached in a church in the Sambasanga district. He told the people there about my story. He told them that there is someone whom God saved from that other side. He is alive and with us. One day you can see him. And then the next Sabbath someone from these people called me and said, Oh, someone wants to know you. You need to go to that stage and tell your story. From that moment on I went to different churches people called me to come over and give my testimony. At that time I went to a lot of churches. Not only to Adventist churches but also to Baptist assemblies. I went there to testify that God is real. Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ can save you. He can talk to you if you want that he appears to you. He can come because I saw him. He is real. I went to a lot of churches and I received requests from other people. People send me particular messages and asked me, Are you sure? I'm on that side. I want to leave that place but I can't because I know that they will kill me. Why did they not kill you? And I said, You know, I didn't leave that place. Jesus Christ redeemed me from that place. And it is this Jesus who gave me this life and gave me power. He is alive and he can give you the same power. Don't be afraid. Well, believe in him. Believe in Jesus. Jesus Christ can save you and can give you power. He can give you freedom. He can give you peace. You don't have peace. He can give you peace. You are a slave. I was talking about what Jesus can do, what he did in my life. I said, he can do it in your life. If he did it in me, in my life, he can do it in you. I was in a high level, you are in a low level. That is nothing. I was up, you are down. That means nothing. God can appear to you. Believe in him. I believed in him. Now I'm alive. After that, there was a pastor from Brazil called Manassas, who came to our central church. He is a preacher, an international preacher. There was an elder who talked to him. His name is Carlos Sambayo and he is a man of God. This elder talked to this pastor and said, Oh, I want to get to know this guy. I want to meet this boy. The elder called me and I went there to meet with the pastor in the Catavala Hotel in Rwanda. I met him for the first time and I was afraid to talk. He said, Sit down here. 
So you were afraid to talk? Yes, I was afraid to talk. The pastor said, Okay, you can sit here and talk to me. And I started by saying, Thank you for this opportunity that you gave me to talk about my story, how God set me free from that side. But before I became a Christian, I was a Satanist. He asked, What? Stop. What? Are you sure? You were a Satanist. I said, Yes. He said, Stop. Let's go. We went to an elevator and went to his room. His wife was there. He got his iPhone and started to record. And he said, Okay, thank you, you can start a talk. I asked, Are you sure? The pastor said, Don't worry, my son, you can start. Are you okay? Okay, you are free, you can tell me the story. He started to record and I started to tell the people in Portuguese. I started to tell the same story that I told here, but a bit longer because Portuguese is my native language. I told them a lot about the things that I did on that side. After that, he said, Oh, you are alive. You are alive. I said, Yes, I'm alive. I'm here. Praise God. Then he said, I will take this testimony with me to Brazil. He went to Brazil and he contacted another pastor called Michel Sambos. He is a well known pastor for the Portuguese speaking people. For the people from Brazil, even people from Angola, Mozambique, and everywhere, where people speak Portuguese. He is a famous pastor. Pastor Manasseh Kiros gave the testimony to Pastor Michel Sambos to analyze if this one is true or not. He said, You need to analyze this story nicely. Pastor Manasseh is a speaker of the radio station Novo Tempo. It means new time. It's an Adventist radio station in Brazil. Yes, and in English we call it Hope Channel, but in Portuguese we call it Novo Tempo. And Pastor Michel Sambos is the one that works as an editor for the Adventist radio in Brazil. He wanted to analyze the video nicely to see if it is nice or not, if it is good, if it is true or not. He then put it in his channel and a lot of Brazilians saw that. People shared it with other people. Even people from outside of Brazil, the Portuguese-speaking people. I started receiving calls. My friend asked me, Hey, are you a Satanist? I said, Why do you say I am a Satanist? He answered, A lot of people were watching you on YouTube. You are on YouTube. You said that you are a Satanist. I asked him, Who told you that I am a Satanist? He said, You told that in the video. I said, No, you didn't listen well. I said, I'm an ex, a former Satanist. I never said, I am. I said, I was. That's a difference. We are using different words. You are using the present, but I'm using the past. You said that I am, but I said I was. That's the difference. Okay? I knew that the people would say that I am, but I was and now I am not anymore. You once were but not anymore. Yes, I was. That is in the past. Now I am a friend of Jesus. Jesus is my friend. But people say, a lot of people leave, but after some time they go back to that side. I said, no, I don't. I don't belong to these people anymore that you know or you knew. I am a different person now. Okay? I know who Jesus is. Jesus is my friend. I can make a mistake, I know. I can commit sin. I can make mistakes, but Jesus is my friend and he will continue to be my friend. From that time on I received international calls. Some people said from the other side, We will kill you. Other people said, Thank you. Your testimony saved my life. It gave me more hope to believe in Jesus. There were calls that made me sad and calls that made me happy. I said, Thank you, Lord. I know life is like this. Sometimes you are sad. Sometimes you are happy. That's life. I continued to talk with the people. After some time, people called me from England and from your country, the U.S., people that speak Portuguese or Brazilian. They said, I saw your testimony. Please, can you talk with me? Please, can you come to my channel? I would like to talk with you. This is the reason why I have a lot of videos on YouTube on different channels. Videos in Portuguese because people called me to talk about my story. And I said, okay. Good. But let us start to make them in English too. God blessed me to learn English. Now I can do it in English. Praise God. If someone wants me to talk in his channel, he can call me.
We will leave here my WhatsApp contact to call me in English. We will put it on the screen for you. You can even write in French, but I'm not very fluent in French. But you can send me a message in French. We answer in French, too, and in English. You can contact me through WhatsApp. We will put your WhatsApp on the screen and in the descriptions below. I want to tell you another story. It was when I went to give my testimony and there I saw a famous musician that day. He was talking about himself. I know that side. He's famous. He's very famous, internationally famous. He is an American. He was standing on the pulpit. This is what he said. You don't know how life is when you are famous. You don't know the people. He was talking to the people. He said, I didn't know that I sold my soul to the evil angels. I didn't know. But in the time before I sold my soul, I thought that I will be happy. I have a lot of money now and I become famous. I have a lot of money but I do everything that they want me to do. But I didn't know that before I got there that I will become a slave. Now I am a slave. I can't do the things that I want to do. Now I'm very sad. I'm not happy. Hmm. He wanted to tell the people who were there and were dancing. They didn't know that he was telling them the truth. He was crying and I said, Oh, I know that place. I know who is ruling in this guy. I was there. He needs hope. He needs help. That's the reason why I said, I need to learn English in order to tell these people, In God you can find salvation. Amen. In Jesus Christ you can find salvation. Amen. You don't need to worry, how was your life on that side? God can come and appear to you and say, I am your salvation. I am your Savior. I am your Lord. I can get you from that side and give you freedom. Amen. Don't worry about it. Even if you are a president, if you are a politician, even if you are a famous player, if you are on that side, you are not happy to stay on that side. I was there. The same Jesus who gave me freedom and peace can give you freedom and peace too. He can give you salvation. He can give you life, a good life. Not only life, but he can give you the fullness of life, a complete life that you can be happy. Imagine Satan, the prince of that side, he's not happy. The evil angels are not happy. Why should you, and you are only a person, you are a slave, why should you be happy if that side, all of them are not happy? There is no happiness on that side. There is no hope on that side. There is no peace on that side. There is no freedom on that side. You live like a slave. You have no peace. People can see that you are famous, you are having a lot of money, and they want to be like you. But when you are alone at home in your room, in your bed, you think and you cry. I was there. I know. You can have a lot of things money can buy. But money can't buy peace and happiness. Cannot buy true peace. Money can't give you this. Money can't give you love. Money can't give you grace from God. Money can't give you freedom. Now I can say, God is my friend because Jesus Christ is my friend. He can become your friend, too. I want you to read a text from the Bible. It's in John in the New Testament. John chapter 3. I love these verses. Read them for me, please. John chapter 3 verses 16 to 20. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Amen. But that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. I can only say, God is love. God cannot force you. But on this other side, they like to force you to do things that you don't want to do. But God loves you. He won't force you. He can't force you. No, He will not force you. You obey voluntarily by love. He likes to do things through love. You need to love Him, and before you love Him, you need to know Him. God doesn't like people that follow Him because of their emotion, only by their emotions. He wants you to use your mind, use your reasoning power, to use your logic. You need to know who Jesus is. You really need to know who he is. In the Bible text that you read, we read about Jesus. Jesus loved the world. The world that is spoken here about is talking not about the world that we are living in. He is talking about the people of this world, the human beings. God loved the human beings so much that he sent his love. He sent his only son, which we call Jesus Christ. The other side calls him that guy in the sky, that guy in heaven. 
that guy, that person that is our enemy. No, he is not our enemy. He is not your enemy. He loves you so much that he died for you. Jesus Christ loves you. He cannot force you. But if you don't want, it's your decision. You need to make your decision voluntarily. God is light. He's the true light and he wants to give you this light and he wants to give you this peace. God is God. I love this God now. I can't live without this God. Jesus is my friend. If you want that this Jesus will become your friend too. We can pray with you. I can pray with you and you can get in contact with this channel. My friend, my brother Tim can talk to you. He is American. You can talk to him. You can send a message to him to talk to me. We will pray for you. Yes, we will. We will teach you the method that you can use to leave that place. You don't need to be afraid because Jesus, the same one that appeared to me and talked to me, can talk to you too and he can appear to you too. And then you have your own testimony to tell the people that Jesus appeared to you too. I was on that side, I did this thing. You need to have your own testimony, not mine but your own testimony, that the people can say, I got to know Jesus because of that guy. Don't be afraid. Come and we talk. We talk with you and we pray. Hey, my friends, it's 15 years and he is still living. 15 years since Jesus, the God, the creator of this universe, redeemed him from that side, from the kingdom of darkness. It's been 15 years. He's still here. He's still alive. Have you seen that before? I have only seen them be killed, someone who wants to leave. He's living proof, living proof, that if you call on the name of Jesus, do it in your mind, so the evil angels can't see you doing it. But I'll tell you this, even if you do it by your mouth, Jesus himself will expel every angel that is evil from your presence. Believe it, it is true. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you so much for watching my brother's testimony. And if any one of you out there is struggling with this very thing my brother struggled with, reach out to us. We will pray with you. I talked to Gabriel and we are going to put his contacts down here in the box below the video. We want to pray for you and we want to help as many people to be saved out of the kingdom of darkness. That is the only mission we have, for people to be redeemed from the kingdom of darkness. Hey, thank you people. Thank you. Jesus loves you. He does not want to force anything from you, because he knows only true love can awaken love in someone else. Be blessed.